wrist runner. What is it good for? Absolutely everything, funnily enough, as a simple arc grenade can turn you into a walking electric pylon capable of charging the last city for another 1000 odd years. Now if this sounds appealing because you have a weird fetish of these type of things, then I have a magnificent build you can go ahead and try. Now hear me out, what if instead of us using our grenades to damage ourselves constantly to get a bit of energy back here and there, we instead go super size of ourselves and become a literal thunder god in the making? We're talking constant ability refresh per second, quick supers back that you can spam over and over again, and damage boost galore, and more. Shockingly, you will get a lot of traction with this build in content where you face fields of combatants all waiting for you to hit them in the faces, and if you want to know what the best part of this build is, not only will you have unlimited ammo for those few seconds being charged, but also any combatant hitting you with our projectile will also trigger the perk, making you very unsafe to stick around. What a time to be alive. If you're okay with damaging yourself to get a bit more oomph along the way, then I would recommend you sit back for this one, you're going to be shocked with the results. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. To start with the subclass, we will be using Attunement of Control so we can maximise the usage of Super and also gain extra benefits via the Ionic Trace perk. As Chaos Reach is a very powerful super that's capable of dishing out a large amount of damage within a short time frame, it makes the most sense to go with this subclass as we can maximise the amount of energy we can get back out of this, while also producing a wild flow of orbs of power for all to use. To quickly garner super energy, we have the standard super returner mods that will be tied into our abilities such as Ashes to Ashes and Hands On, but we also have the Wild Opponency mod that will be giving us super energy every time we produce and collect wilds that are made. The plan here is simple. Using Wrist Runner's ability to change arc effects and elemental armors to produce wilds, we will use the two to constantly produce wilds and orbs of power as we go along, which will quickly boost our super return by a large margin. From here, we'll also be activating the Ionic Trace perk, which will be giving us ability energy as we go along, and Crown of Tempest at the same time will also be helping our abilities stay afloat. What we create is a simple but effective circuit of ability and super refresh per second, as long as we are charged, and this is where the magic will come from. Although it will require a more aggressive playstyle to achieve it, you'll still have the ability to garner enough super to which you can then pop multiples once, one after another. You'll just need to make sure you don't die, and you have plenty of combatants to use this on first. Applying what we have learned with the basis of the build, you'll then want weapons that can help you out further in keeping our abilities flowing, and your enemies far far away. I recommend you try the spoiler alert sidearm with Osmosis as its final perk, as this will greatly allow you to produce arc wells via the armor's mod the moment you throw your grenades. Having two ways of producing wells will be a key in terms of staying on top of your abilities, and super, as sometimes you may get into a situation where you can't use your primary or secondary to back you up at times, and you need something quick and reliable that will get the job done. The spoiler alert has that area covered pretty well thanks to its final perk slot options, but mainly the use of osmosis will back you up and allow you to routinely opt into something else while still maintaining the role of the build. I know many of you may not like this weapon as a whole, which is why the Blasphemer can also roll with the perk and is a slug shotgun so landing position hits will equal more damage over time. This will all depend on what you are after though and what playstyle suits you best, of course. For our secondary, we have the Risk Runner which doesn't require a lot of explaining in terms of what its role would be, but in short, we will be zapping ourselves with our own grenades or rely on combatants with arc weapons to trigger this for us. And from here, we will dish out the damage we do times 2. But hold on, we're going to triple this damage just because we can and for this we'll have the Font of Might mod for the extra weapon bonus for arc weapons, and the Time Dilation mod to increase our Font of Might duration overall. Now every time we zap someone and we collect their wealth from them, we will get super swole in the process. This may sound all stupid through how I'm describing it, and trust me it is very stupid, but this combo is nasty, and how often you pull this off will make certain encounters even more of a breeze to get through. For Heavy, I chose to use the Ascendancy Rocket Launcher, as it has Ambitious Assassin and Explosive Light, two killer perks that will allow you to do more damage as we build up Orbs of Light. As I have weapons that are mass work, I can use the orbs produced to activate Explosive Light with a stack depending on how many I have. At max stack, my rockets will be producing a lot more damage than normal, which makes the weapon a perfect setup for the super being used, as both have a higher DPS threshold when activated. 
Against bosses, we can easily take out one full bar of health on the combatants, or even delete a champion from existence. The choice is down to you. Now for the stats, as we are going to be covering all of our abilities via energy regen from the mods and subclass being used, we don't need to heavily invest in all areas to achieve the good feedback rate. Instead, we will be picking just one ability that will be the crutch of the build. If we take a look at Discipline, it should be roughly be the highest stat in your arsenal as you're going to be using it a lot for burning up your super, activating both your exotic traits, and most importantly, help with regenerating all of our abilities in one go. Aiming for 70 for a 41 second cooldown, or even 60 for a 45 second cooldown, would be ideal with everything in play currently. This would be a key crutch ability that you'll rely on from morning to night to make the build work in your favour. And because of this, it makes the most sense to heavily invest in this area, so we can always have this ability available at all times. Honest passive nature of the stat is good, but adding in mods such as Grenade Kickstart, Absolution, Distribution, and Elemental Armaments for producing wells will all hold weight with supporting the stat even more. And don't forget, we have the Ionic Trace subclass perk routinely making your life a little bit more easier. Your intellect stat will be the second most important area to invest in for the build, and for this, this will be linked back to your uses of mods such as Water Potency being used. Water Potency will be giving us a small amount of super energy every time we collect wells, so to make the intellect stat more appealing for all, as we have wells at 40, I've added in the Bountiful Well mod to increase the number of wells we create by 2 every time we produce wells. And then we have the hands on Ashes to Ashes mod that will both work hand in hand with giving us more energy to chew on. As I've designed the build to make sure we always have the ability energy freely available, both the hands on Ashes to Ashes mod will see extensive use while our Risk Runner will be going into overdrive for these wells. Also, we get extra orbs of power at the same time via our weapon, so this will make a large impact. We can, of course, add in the Frontal Wisdom mod for that extra bonus in Intellect Regen but only if you're happy to take out one of the other mods being used instead. Now for mods left over, we have the Time Dilation mod for extending certain mods with timers for longer, and a Font of Might that will grant us extra weapon damage bonus upon collecting an elemental well. Now as we have covered the main topics that you'll need to know more about the build and how it works, here's everything about this stat and the mod section shortened for your viewing pleasure. For Head, we have Discipline, Hands-On, Ashes to Assets and Elemental Armors mod, for Arm, we have Minor Intellect, Unstoppable, Sidearm, Grenade Kickstart, and Elemental Time Dilation mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Kakasa Stamina Times 2, and Bounded for World mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Recuperation, Absolution, and Font of Might mod. Bond, we have Minor Discipline, Distribution, and Well of Potency mod. This build has a lot of things going on with it, with the constant cooldowns and activations appearing on your screen. From the end results of testing, as long as we trigger the Risk Runner in the right location and timing, we can wipe out a room of combatants within a millisecond of them spawning, and the bigger variants such as the Mages and Ultras will get stun locked into oblivion. It can become very hectic in situations where there are dozens of combatants charging at you, and the results of the outcomes are shocking, to say the least. If we compare this to my last build for the Usual Trinity Ghoul instead, we had a near identical setup with the only difference being the elemental worlds being used, subclass and weapon of your choice. Both areas allow you to easily see the areas and both have great chain abilities that you or your teammates could benefit from. The only main difference with the two builds is that one is less risky to use but requires more precision, while the other has a high risk of death if not properly used, but can lead to areas being cleared out much faster. The risk reward setup is just balanced enough that we can use it effectively without dying too much. So with our build, we have a bit of a team leader for DPS and team supporter going on within the build, which should suit those that are interested in playing two roles in one. Like I mentioned before, our grenades will be the main focusing point that everything from our mods to subclass will be working off from, and from that we can then spread its effects over to our abilities and so forth. Using our grenade to activate this runner and crown of tempers will supercharge us and allow us to spread this arc chain effects to others, while benefiting from a large amount of abilities and super energy in the meantime. At the same time, mods such as Font of Might will grant you the extra damage and weapon boost when applicable, and crown of tempers as a trade will increase the amount of energy we get back so we can use hands on and ashes to ashes more often for an overall final super, to which we can then save and repeat as many times as you wish. 
what you are witnessing is a very simple but highly powerful arc build that will constantly rotate his ability usage and allow you to have a wealth of abilities flowing and super energy just from becoming empowered. Imagine that, all of this is achieved from a single arc grenade and an arc masochist with a dream to go big. So there you have it, a arc friendly build that will clean maps out like me at a all you can eat buffet. If you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you did that type of stuff link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all in the next one.